We're already selling our souls to the super state for the purposes of immediate gratification. That's right. While being enticed to do so by Mr. Fear Chairman, could idiots. the witness be asked to summarize, please? Oh, wow. They're cutting him off. It doesn't get more ironic than a government official shutting down someone's speech when they're talking about government intervention in people's lives. But exactly that happened in Jordan Peterson's opening remarks at the House Weaponization Committee. I would like to start by expressing my uh, appreciation for the privilege awarded to me to testify here today. It, it really is an honor to be asked to do so. I'm not here to talk about January 6th or about any particular threat, insurrection, or protest, political or ideological, real or imaginary. I'm here to talk about the already extant and expanding collusion of government and corporation in restricting the individual freedom and autonomy upon which the productive, generous, and stable psyche, psyche economy, and state are themselves necessarily founded. I'll begin my comments, therefore, in the most general terms to shed light on the mounting problem. There are now 700 million CCTVs in China under the rule of the Communist Party. The system to which those electronic eyes are attached is the most complete state apparatus of surveillance yet imagined, with the ability not only to recognize faces at a distance, but gate itself when facial features are hidden or obscured. Such capability can and will soon be augmented to the point where the movement of eyes themselves, monitored by high resolution and intelligent cameras, will soon be sufficient to identify any aware and active party. The demented, naive, and prideful engineers who so enthusiastically helped build this system call it Skynet. After the rogue oh, and all-seeing technology that took such a dreadfully wrong term, turn in the famous science fiction movie Terminator series, featuring artificially intelligent robot intelligences hell-bent on protecting themselves by destroying humanity. The name also references a well-known Chinese phrase describing the reach of the divine itself. The net of heaven is vast, yet it misses nothing, which aptly describes the capabilities of the new state apparatus. The system is integrated with the so-called Chinese social credit system, which awards its involuntary participants with a score indicating their compliance with the dictates of the Chinese Communist Party, allowing for full control over access to everything they possess electronically, most ominously their savings and their access to travel, certainly all modern means of travel, but increasingly as the electronic gates come up even by walking. If you're Chinese or a visitor, your access to the world can be reduced to zero if your social credit score falls beyond an arbitrary minimum. This allows you purposefully to be shut out of all activities that can be virtualized. And in a rapidly virtualizing world, this increasingly means all activities, driving, shopping, working, eating, finding shelter, even fraternizing with friends and family, as merely being in the presence of someone with a low social credit score means that your own score can be lowered. This has also opened up the opportunity for the government to extract slave-like labor from its citizens so burdened as the donation of free work to the state still constitute one means by which erring Chinese men and women can increase their score and remain part of human society. Wow. This is precisely the payment system most desired by the most tyrannical, not the work for me and benefit thereby that constitutes the contractual arrangement undertaken by free and sovereign citizens, but the work for me and I will lift the deprivation I imposed that has always been the late motif of the slaver. That's right. Why is any of this relevant to people in the West? Before he goes into why it's relevant to the West, just think about that for a second, guys. I think he said 750 or 700 million CCTV systems in China. I think their population's around one and a half billion. That's half of the population. So imagine here in America, let's say we have 350 million people 
175 million surveillance cameras in America controlled by the government. That's the level that they're facing in China. The fact that they're integrating that with this social credit score system is disturbing to say the least for all the reasons he gave. Listen to his words in this. This is very powerful and exactly where we're headed if we don't get it together. Well, because the technology that the Chinese Communist Party employs is an extension of Western technology. Mm. Because we already fell prey to the terrible temptation of lockdown employed by that state in the face of hypothetical crisis once and in the very recent past, because we're walking step by step in the same direction, partly because of the hypothetical convenience of universal and automatic recognition of identity. Imagine if our government had this system during the COVID lockdown period. Remember, they went out on the beach and accosted people who were just surfing. They went out in parks and accosted people for being out. They wouldn't let businesses open, imposing their will on the people at a level that was disturbing. Imagine if they had this technology to do it. This is why it's so terrifying, because they've already shown that they're willing to trample on your rights. If they had better technology that would enable them to do so, you think they wouldn't use it? And partly because any problem whatsoever that now confronts us can easily be used to justify the increasing reach of the security and nanny state. It is said that Stone Age people first confronted with cameras and their resultant photographs by modern anthropologists objected to having their images captured as they feared the captivity of their souls. It turns out that such fear was prescient. The images that we leave behind while navigating virtual space are such close duplicates of our actual selves that the capture of our essence is at this point all but guaranteed. We all now have our doppelgangers. We all live so much in the virtual world in consequence of our purchasing habits and modes of electronically mediated communication that our very selves have become reducible to a frightening degree to data, the modern equivalent of our footprint, with the same data making up an image of our identity, an identity which can be and is increasingly bought and sold by the invisible corporate brokers that still mostly use it to sell us what we so desperately and carelessly and conveniently want, but can also be used to track, monitor, and punish everything we do and say. Behavioral scientists facilitate this process with their reprehensible nudging, the practice of pushing people in a given ideologically determined direction by manipulating invisible incentives behind the scene. Corporations track purchasing decisions, developing algorithms that with increasing accuracy track our patterns of attention and action, allowing for the prediction of what might next be most enticing, doing so not only to offer us what we want, but to determine and shape what we need. Mm -hmm. Governments can and are colluding with these corporate agents to develop a picture not only of our actions but of our thoughts and words so that deviation from the desired end can be mapped, rewarded and punished. The development of a digital identity and currency is nothing more than the likely end consequence of such inclinations and the combination of both can and will facilitate the development of a surveillance state the scope of which optimistic pessimists of totalitarianism such as George Orwell could scarcely imagine. This is all 100% true. And to his point about just how integrated with technology we already are, specifically social media and how that's leveraged against us to essentially shape the way we think, all you have to do is look at the current issue right now with TikTok. All of these people who are addicted to TikTok are writing in to their members of Congress, pleading with them, please don't take it down. My health is on the line. I might take my own life. It's that serious. And when they have that level of dependency, especially on our young people, just think about the consequences of that. If it can easily be manipulated, not just to shape the way you think and the way you behave, but also to exercise control over you. The missing link to that, of course, is taking currency to the next level and having an entirely electronic currency that they can manipulate at their will. I mean, we're already on the precipice of this, guys. And the people sitting in this room, the Congress people, especially the Democrats who have supported pushing this for the past several years and who wanted carte blanche over our rights when it came to lockdowns and mandates and what we're allowed to say and what we're not allowed to say, I, I hope that they're sitting there 
realizing he's talking about them, but they probably lack that level of self-awareness. The new AI systems, which are so rapidly emerging, do nothing but increase this danger, providing for the possibility of a super surveillance whose scope exceeds anything that mere unaugmented humans could imagine, mm. while also making it certain that even the perceptions that in the real world shape our attitudes, conduct, and personality can, manip can be manipulated to the degree that we will not even be able to see a reality outside which that has been constructed by the superstate. The ultimate fascist collusion between gigantic self-interested corporations and paranoid security obsessed anti-human governments. We already struggle to see true reality outside of the construct. All you have to do is look at the narrative shaped by mainstream media that get pushed down our throats. So many people's worldview is contingent on what they tell them and who is they. Well, it's a media that's controlled by corporations and the government. We're already selling our souls to the super state for the purposes of immediate gratification. That's right. While being enticed to do so by Mr. Fear Chairman, could the witness be asked to summarize, please? Oh, wow. They're cutting him off. And well, do I have my five minutes or do I not? Yeah. You've gone over five Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I can, I can certainly. Well, they usually let The witness can summarize. I, we're, we're always a little lenient with the I'll, time. If you I'll, can summarize. I'll take 10 more seconds. seconds. Sure. With increasing ability to monitor not only the actual attention patterns and behaviors of its citizens, but to predict those that are most likely, the persecution of even potential crime becomes ever more likely. If you have nothing to hide, you will have nothing to fear, will be the slogan commandeered by those most likely to turn to surveillance to protect and control. Mm -hmm. What was the famous Soviet totalitarian joke attributed to Lavrenti Beria, head of the secret police? Show me the man and I'll show you the crime. Those words were true enough in the time of Stalin's KGB, and the police were secret enough then as well. But that's nothing compared to what we can and likely will produce now. A police so secret that we will not even be able to detect their comprehensive and subtle activity. Monitoring crime so pervasive that everyone under the dictates of the system will have something to hide in order, Mr. Chairman. Oh, they're cutting him off again. Yeah. They clearly did not like what he had to say. Why? Because he's calling them out directly. This is exactly what they want. And they'll do it under the guise, of course, of protecting you. Lockdowns were to protect you. Forcing you to wear a mask was to protect you. Forcing you to take an experimental medicine against your will, otherwise you lost your job, was to protect you. They'll give some reason why national digital currency is a necessary precaution to take to protect you. They'll come up with some reason. It's always under the guise of protecting you. Really, they're just chipping away at your freedoms and exercising more control over your life. I think it's insane that they cut him off. They clearly don't like what he has to say. Yeah, he went over his time, but that happens all the time in these hearings. And I think it's very telling. And I think it's very ironic that in a hearing about government control over the lives of citizens, essentially, which is what the House Weaponization Committee is looking into, those very people, the people that <laughs> comprise this part of our government, intervened. They actually did the thing he's talking about on a micro level. Insane. Let me know what you guys think. Subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot. I appreciate you.